is up guys welcome to so hills kids thank you so much for joining us it's week two of our new series and we're diving into the whole story of the bible i hope you guys are excited because i know i am last week we talked about creation there was six days of creation and one day of rest in the beginning and god made everything in those six days and then he rested and so today we're going to talk about something uh, i don't know kind of important that he made on that sixth day i don't know if you guys are or are, are, you know you know or anything but it's kind of human it's kind of us people you know adam and eve you know that story uh, maybe you've heard it once or twice but today we're talking about adam and eve and what that has to do with the whole story of the bible and jesus himself so before that we're talking about humans being created so i have myself a quiz for you guys. Oh, you can't see the answers. Who you thought you were going to cheat, but I've got a human body quiz for you guys. So get your family and see who can get the most of these right. Our first question is the human eye is about the size of a marble. What do you guys think? The human eyeball is about the size of a marble. Huh. Maybe. Unfortunately, if you said true, the answer is false. It's actually about the size of a table tennis ball. You know, ping pong ball? It's about that size, which is, I don't know, I feel like that's a lot to be in my skull, but who knows? Okay. Anyways, number two, the colored part of your eyeball, the iris, is actually a muscle. Have you ever looked really close at your eyeball and been like, whoa, that looks weird? I know I've done it, so maybe you have too. But is that in there a muscle? The answer is true. It actually is. It opens and closes like this to help you focus and see. And so it's a muscle that contracts. Let's go. And that's why maybe if you're looking at something for too long or uh, you're trying to look really hard or something, you may feel some strain in your eyes because it's a muscle being used. All right, here's number three. Your mouth has one million taste buds. True or false? Let me see. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I give up. Sorry. Um, I tried. Uh, I'm not going to count them all, though. The answer, however, is false. Luckily, we have the answer here. There's about 10,000 taste buds on your tongue, which is still a lot. So there's 10,000. All right, let's see. The largest organ in your body is your lungs. Let me see. Yep, they're there still. What do you guys think? It's actually false it's your skin did you know that your skin is an organ just like your stomach or your kidneys ah that's an organ as well all right number uh oh whichever one this is every part of your body has the ability to repair itself every part of your body has the ability to repair itself think about that is that possible is that true i don't know the question is actually false not all of your uh, body parts have abilities to repair. A lot of them have some amazing abilities like your skin, uh, but think about your teeth, right? If you lose your grown-up teeth, those aren't coming back. So it can't quite grow back teeth, but even its bones can heal and mend. So that's super cool. And here's the last one. The hardest bone in your body is in your ear. Hmm? I don't, like, I just can't like my leg bones like hold up my whole body right but the, the answer is actually true the hardest bone in your body is in your ear did you know you have bones in your ears it's how you hear but that is that guys we are created in an amazing and unique way unlike anything else so today we have the bible story that i want you guys to listen to and then we're going to recap after that so i will see you guys after <laughs> On the sixth day of creation, God made people. God said, let us make man in our own image. They will rule over the whole earth and all the creatures on the earth. So God created both male and female people in his image. God took dust from the ground and made a body. God breathed into the man and the man became alive. God planted a garden in the land of Eden and put the man there. God told the man to work in the garden and take care of it. God provided food from the trees for the man to eat, and God provided a river to water the garden. Then God said, you may eat from any of the trees in the garden, 
except for one. The garden had a tree in it called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warned the man, if you eat from that tree, you will die. Then God said, it is not good for man to be alone. So God decided to make a helper for the man. God brought to the man the animals he had created. And the man gave names to all of the creatures. But none of the animals was a good helper for the man. Oh. So God made the man fall into a deep sleep. He took one of the man's ribs and created a woman. When the man saw the woman, he was very happy. This one, at last, he said, is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. The woman was a perfect helper for the man. She was his wife. The man's name was Adam, and his wife's name was Eve. God gave Adam and Eve good things. He put them in charge of the animals and provided everything they needed. God looked at everything he made, and it was very good. So on the seventh day of creation, God rested from his work. God created people in his own image and provides for everything he made. People are special because God made people to live forever in a relationship with him. Through his son, Jesus, we can have eternal life with God just as he planned. Isn't that amazing how God created us in his image and in his likeness? Genesis 1, 26 tells us, God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth, the small animals that scurry on the ground. That is pretty cool. God created us. And first, he created us with a desire to rule to be in charge and to not just do that, but to take care of. God created us to take care of his planet, to take care of everything around, whether it's recycling or loving the people beside you. Taking care of your planet is something that God designed us to do. But also, here's the cool part. God created human beings in his own image, verse 7, 27 says. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and all the animals that scurry along the ground. And then he says, I've given you everything. I've given you all the seeds and the plants that you need to survive and to live and to do well. But the cool thing here is that we, we were made in God's image. Now, for, for us, what does that mean? What does being made in the image of something mean, right? It's kind of it's kind of hard to, to think about, but, but stop and let's think. What is being made in the image of like? It doesn't mean that we're an identical copy of God, right? Because that would be weird. A bunch of us all the same? Uh, no, that's not. Made in the image means that we bear some of the things that God bears, like ruling over things. Um, another one is creating, right? How many of you guys love to draw or love to do cool things? Or even every time you do a math problem, you're creating a solution. You create uh, solutions to problems. You solve things. You want to build and grow and expand. And that is something that God's nature, being made in God's image, allows us to do, right? No other animal has done what we can do because no animal was blessed with being made in the image of of God in his likeness. God gave us something very unique and very important. And ultimately, God gave us something that, that really defines who we are, and it's our soul, right? He himself breathed life into the first man and woman. And so that gives us a soul, that gives us um, unique characteristics, that gives us morals, right? That gives us a lot of different things. Why? Because here's the big question. Why did God create us? Well, ultimately, God created humankind for his glory, for his good, right? 
God created everything for his glory and his good. And that is what we're part of. We are God's greatest creation. And even though we have fallen, even though we have sinned and we have failed, God has created us and we still can bring God glory. When we accept who Jesus is on the cross, when we understand that we were created, and even though we sinned, God still loves us, and Jesus still died on the cross, that we can see that even in Genesis chapter 2, in our creation, before there was even an issue of sin, God's plan and Jesus' love were still going on. So I want you guys to think about that. Think about God's love. Think about God's plan in your life and how Jesus' love is relevant through the entire Bible. I hope you guys enjoyed this because I know I did. Parents, I want to encourage you guys to talk with your kids. Talk about some of the cool things that you've created and, and the ways that you've seen God in his creation as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys next week as we dive into a not-so-fun part of the Bible, right? We're going to discuss the fall. So I will see you guys later. Bye.